We would like to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Sonic Electronics. So check them out for great deals on speakers, head units, amps, subs, wiring, etc. Use discount code PROVOBEAST for an instant 5% off your next purchase during checkout. Provobeast doing another install today. Today we're doing an install on a brand new 2017 uh, Toyota Tundra. What we'll be doing is actually installing two amplifiers, a 4 channel and a bass amplifier and a Taco Tunes box. We're going to show you how to install um, everything to the factory system here, keep everything super nice and tidy. We're going to show you how to run all the cabling and uh, really go from there. Now we're using the setup directly from Taco Tunes, everything supplied by them. Um, really you can buy specific packages from them. I'll throw a link down in the description so you know what package we used and all the components listed with that package. So let's go ahead and get started. Now with this truck everything's going to go back behind the rear seat. Um, so essentially we need to pull this whole seat out itself and the amplifier is going under one seat and then our line out converter crossover is going to go in the other. So. Um, lots going to have to come out of this truck is, like I said, we're going to have to go remove all the bolts, pull the seats out, and then do the same for the front seats as well. Now be sure to go ahead and disconnect the battery here um, before you do anything with the truck just to ensure everything's safe, especially with these newer systems. Um, it's commonly known you can tri trip the airbag light if the uh, negative is on the battery and you disconnect any harness related to the airbag. So since we're going to mount our amps and crossover under the front seats, go ahead and remove the bolts. There's four bolts on all four corners. There's harnesses you'll need to unplug from the seat itself. Same thing with the other side. And in the back, there's, um, I think, eight bolts, four, four for each side. So go ahead and remove those as well. Okay, so we went ahead and removed all the seats. I believe they're about 17 millimeter in the back, and we have 14 millimeter in the front. Um, like I said, should have removed the battery before you disconnect your harnesses on both front seats. Now at this point, we're gonna start running a positive wire from their battery. Our five channel amplifier is gonna go here. And like I said, our crossover is gonna go under the other side of the seat. All right, so with the seats removed, we're ready to go ahead and install our power wire from the battery to the amplifier that'll go under, under the front driver's side seat. Um, we have Stinger four gauge and ground, power and ground wire, as well as a T-spec, fuse block, and fuse. We're going to see our factory grommet there. We're going to be going right through that factory grommet. We're going to show you exactly how to get through there, just so it seals around the, the aftermarket wire that we're running through and looks super clean in factory. That was a quick tip. When you actually reach your hand down in there, and you feel up underneath this wiring harness, you're going to feel, it's like a um, little part of the grommet. I guess you call it a, a nipple that steps out. And you can actually cut a little slit in it. It'd be too hard to show on camera, but essentially you fill your hand underneath the wiring harness. You'll st see it sticking out there. And you can just cut the end off. It's a little cap. And essentially this is there specifically to run extra wiring through the firewall, which makes it super convenient. So I've cut that off and this will allow me from inside the cab to push this wire up into the, uh, the engine bay. There is our factory wiring. And if you pull this little flap down, I don't want to cover the camera too much here, but you're going to see the hole that we just cut and the axis right into the engine bay. So we're going to go right through that hole um, and feed the wire up to the battery area. That give us a little bit more space. Let's go ahead and pop these panels out. Now I do have a panel tool and essentially these are all held on with clips. Once this kick panel is removed, the corner kick panel will actually pop on out as well. So we'll show you how to get that out. You can start with your fingers. All right, so we got that popped off. Again, just held on with clips. As you can see, they clip on here in these areas. You're gonna have to remove this guy. It's just kind of a plastic nut. Go to remove that, and it's held on with clips here in the front. Okay, two clips. Which clip here in the front, and then that one plastic nut came off and it slipped on out. Gives us really good access to that wiring access, and that hole right under the main harness itself. 
All right, we threw a little WD-40 on there, but essentially the wire goes right on through. Now from right underneath the wiring harness there. Now if you need help, you can use a zip tie or, or a, a hanger to tape the wire through and you can pull it through a little bit easier. But essentially that's it. So we're gonna zip tie this up. It came with loom, so we'll make sure this wire looks nice and clean. Um, we'll get our fuse holder probably mounted here on the side of the uh, inner panel. And then essentially you have enough length to go to the positive on the battery. We're gonna go right to that positive nut. All right, so we've got our fuse all mounted here. Uh, the nice thing is it does clear the, the hood actuator, so it's a nice good spot, all mounted. Got our fuse in, we split loomed to the firewall and we split loomed down, up, and around. And as you can see here, we got it up on the stud. We're still safe because the negative is off the battery. Okay, so we've run our wire down. Since the kick panel is out, we just put it up through these clips. Up underneath, pull the carpet up. It's gonna follow along this factory loom and come out here. Now, this Taco Tunes amplifier that it, that the kit came with, it sits on this crossbar here and hangs over and it has little two little pedestals because as you notice, we have a vent for our heater. So we don't wanna sit the amp directly over that and block it or else the amp will overheat and you won't have proper airflow. Now for the ground, there's a bolt here that we removed. We're actually going to clean up this bracket here and use this as a grounding location for our amplifier. We're going to have to really clean this paint up just so there's no resistance there and it's directly over those threaded bolts in the frame itself. So in order to do so, you can actually unbolt the bottom of the seat, which we've done here. And then this whole panel is just held on with clips on both sides. Um, just apply pressure all the way on both sides and it comes free. Okay, so we pop that out, and as you can see, that's exactly all the clips there. And it just comes right out. Make sure you start at the top, because it does clip here at the top. Then you work your way down, popping the clips as you go along. And once those clips are off, and the panels are out of the way, there's three of these bolts. I just pulled it off to the side, and using a wire brush, as you can see here, I've really cleaned the paint off really, really well. Bare metal, and that's where my ring terminal is gonna sit. And then I'm going to put this back on and the bolt then back through. So it's on bare metal and it's a super clean ground. All right, so our ground's all good. And again, it's under the bracket in between the bracket and the frame. And we remember we clean the paint off. It's nice and tight. So it'll totally be out of the way and hidden. At this point, we got our ground run. We got our power wire run. Now we need to run our speaker wire to all their door panels. And this is using a recurve, it's a Taco Tunes product. And it's more essentially like a big crossover, allowing us to set all our frequencies. But essentially we gotta run all the wiring to that as well. So next thing we're gonna do is start running those wires to the recurve, the RCAs and the speaker wires. Each door will have its own tweeter wire and speaker wire. Now if you wanna actually take the carpet out, and I think we're going to just to give us a little more space to run all the wiring for the recurve and we're going to pull out the center console. We don't have to pull it all out, just this back portion, because as you can see, there's the seam in the carpet. Once we remove the back half, the carpet will come out, giving us plenty of space to run wires cleanly underneath the carpet. So your shift knob just screws on off, and then this top portion is just clipped in. And you'll get it just using a panel tool, getting up underneath. You can pry it loose, as you can see there. Get it right up and out. Out of the way. Now you're going to notice there's a Phillips here and a Phillips here. Go ahead and remove those and clip this guy and then there's going to be screws inside of the uh, glove box itself. Once you've loosened there's four 10 millimeter bolts in there. Once those are out everything's disconnected. This just slides on back totally disconnects. Go ahead and shut it. Pull it out of the way. All right carpet's all out. There you go. Not a hard task to do, and then we remove the foam inserts. But once that center console's out, it just the whole thing comes right on out in one piece. It's really nice. Now, we've run our RCAs right there, as you can see, over underneath the passenger right rear seat. Once the foam is back in, it'll be up there. So that's where we run our RCAs. Now at this point, we're ready to start running our signal wire from our factory radio system to our recurve and the, again the recurve is gonna have it's like a fancy line out converter with a lot of adjustments 
to really provide the best signal for our amplifier and get that all set up in addition to having our speaker wire from our amplifier start running it to all the doors. Now each door will have two sets, a mid-range speaker wire and a tweeter speaker wire. Now like I said, if you order from Taco Tunes, they send you two giant packs of wires. Um, you have a heavier set, heavier gauge, a black set, and a silver set. And really they give you two different colors, so it just helps you color code them for which side's which. And then a smaller gauge wire, same thing, two colors, the black and the silver, for the, the Twitter speakers. All right, here we are in the truck. Now, if you have the non-JBL system, unfortunately, the factory amplifier for the non-JBL system, you can't tap into. You have to go right behind the radio itself. Now, this, the, the wiring system that we've shown you previously, what I've done here is I've just extended all those long wires. And all this does is piggyback. Now these ends will plug into the back of the radio, and then these ends will plug into the existing factory harnesses, providing a piggyback, and then these wires are all color-coded, and we're gonna show you how, but these will go to our equalizer line-out converter, the, the reverb. So we're gonna run those from the behind the radio all the way down, working our way back over to this location. All right, so to take out the radio itself, all we need to do is simply pull it just for a brief moment to plug our piggyback wires into and then immediately put it right on back. It's not too bad to get into. Um, this lower panel is just held on with clips. Once we pop that out, it exposes the 10, four 10 millimeter bolts. Once those bolts are out, the radio just pops right on out. So let's get started. All right, so I use the panel tool and just get up underneath and kind of get this pulled out. As you can see, it'll just pop right on out. It's only held on with clips. Now you can either Disconnect that or just kind of lay it off to the side and as you can see there's one two Three four ten millimeters go ahead and remove those and then the radio just pops right on out Okay, once you move those four screws, you're gonna notice there's gonna be two clips at the top of this radio So when you give it a pull you can use a panel tool to help release them essentially it comes straight on out and It's just going to lean down enough where we can get behind the radio and plug in our piggybacks All right so we went ahead and unplugged the factory harnesses here, these two from the back behind the radio. And then our adapter plugs into those. And then the other end of the adapter plugs right back into the radio, as you can see there. And there's only two harnesses that this fits. You can't really get them mixed up. So this end's all plugged in. Our adapter's plugged in. Now we're gonna run this cabling down through the center console and we're gonna work our way back to our equalizer area. All right, so I just fed it through, and as you can see there, I just used a hanger and fished it on through. Now I'm gonna run it under the carpet from there, and at this point, let's put the radio back in. Okay, so we got the radio back in just in reverse order. Now let's go ahead and run this wire to the back. Okay, I just tucked it underneath the carpet, and as you can see there, it just came right on out. It ran it along the kick panel up and around. We have a little extra slack, but the nice thing is with this wire we can certainly trim it. But this will all plug into our recurve or our equalizer. Now we'll go in this location. So we got our RCAs all ready to go. Um, at this point, we can get our recurve all mounted. We have to run one more wire from our recurve all the way over to our amplifier. And that wire triggers our amp to turn on when we turn the key on. Um, and essentially after that, all we have left is to run speaker wire to each door. All right, speaker wire time. So, we're actually running crossovers like Taco Tune suggested inside the center console. Uh, but if you're not running crossovers, don't worry about it in the event you're running uh, coaxial speakers. But uh, the, uh, the front components and rear components we're putting in require them. But essentially from the output, speaker output of the amp, you're gonna run new wiring to each of the doors. Now, since I am running crossovers, the output, speaker output from the amplifier, I've run up to our center console here. Now, they're gonna go into the crossover and the crossover is gonna split the signal between tweeters and woofers. So, from the output of the crossovers, each door is gonna have two sets of wire. 
We have a 18 gauge tweeter and a 16 gauge woofer wire. Now, like I said, if you're not running crossovers, don't worry about this portion. Just run your speaker wire output from your amplifier, run the line just directly to each door speaker. Okay, at this point, before we start assembling the uh, recurve and the amplifier here in this location, we need to get this back carpet in, just so we can actually mount the components in. And at this point, we can put in our foam inserts in the back and slowly reassemble, putting the carpet back in. Now we don't want to put in our center console yet, just because we have to put in our crossovers. But this at least allows us to start cleaning up wiring, making sure it's nice and tidy. Now, as you've noticed, I ran the remote turn on wire for the amplifier, as you can see, power ground remote turn on wire along the back because it'll also come out of the recurve as well. Now, additionally, the recurve has that base knob and so I've hooked up that base knob and left the long wire there, um, that, but that also goes there in the back. So, let's go ahead and get the carpet in and uh, go from that point. All right, so carpet. Carpet goes all back in here. Got my power ground remote turn on wire, my speaker output wire. Um, I still need to run my sub, but I can run that down along the side. And then, uh, so this is all just about all good for the amp. On this side, went ahead and got our input signal wire and power wire for our recurve. Got our base knob control wire sticking through, our RCA's output to the amplifier, run over there, and a remote turn on wire for our amplifier so it triggers and turns on at the right time. So we'll get these all cleaned up once we get our recurve mounted right here in between the seats. Um, we're going to go ahead and sound it in the back too as well and uh, get our box all mounted before we put the back seats in. We're going to go get our amplifier mounted and uh, get our front seats in and center console back in. Okay, so we got our amplifier all mounted. Now um, you'll drill and mount two screws up front in this pillar. Make sure you don't pinch anything. And on the back there, they come with little pedestals. Same thing, make sure you don't catch any wires, but you'll mount that there in the back as well using the screws provided. So those are all in. We got our, all our wires all hooked up, super nice and clean. Then our RCAs are also good to go. They are labeled sub, front and rear. So the amp's all in. Nice thing is the dials are easily serviceable from the front of the seat. So at this point, we're ready to put the front seats back in and the center console. All right. So we went ahead and actually just sounded in the back wall. Totally optional, but uh, of course it always aids in sound quality. So at this point, Got our front seats all in, all good to go. Got our wiring for our recurve equalizer. Let's go ahead and get our sub box in and get that mounted to the back wall. And uh, we got our sub wire for our amplifier. We're gonna run this to this area as well and uh, continue on. All right, so look at that. We got our sub box in, hooked up to our sub wire from our hand. Super, super clean. You can go ahead and check out the description. I have an unboxing of these subs. Kind of show you a little bit more of them. Got a recurve in. Our equalizer. It's kind of like a big line out converter. It's all mounted. Now remember these go to our five channel amplifier. And from that big huge wiring harness that uh, Taco Tune supplied that plugged into the back of the radio, that piggyback there, it supplied our signal wire from our radio and power ground and uh, ignition. Now the blue wire here goes to our amplifier to turn the amp on when the car is on. So that is all mounted, super clean, haven't tuned it yet. We'll go ahead and tune it when we're ready to uh, boot everything up for officially the first time. But uh, yeah, it's all good to go. Next thing here is we're gonna go ahead and get our crossovers all taken care of in the center console. And uh, yep, we're just about there. Okay, so it's time to start hooking up crossovers, and I certainly have, since we're doing components in all four doors. We'll have four sets of crossovers, and we've chosen the center console, because it's a good safe place to, uh, to mount them. We have one, two, these are our front ones that are already done. I've already done one rear, and I'm gonna show you how to do the other rear. Now, here's our crossover. 
As you can see here, the IN is the input. That comes directly from our amplifier. So that one signal, which we labeled here, for example, we have uh, rear left. This comes straight from the amplifier. And then these two speakers, one's the mid-range woofer, one's the tweeter, go to our rear left door speaker. So these are the outputs from the crossover. This is the input from the amplifier. And essentially we're gonna get these hooked up and then we're gonna slip it right in. So I'm gonna quickly do that and show you how we've done it. All right, so we got our crossover all hooked up there. This is our input from our amplifier. And these are our outputs. This is our woofer. This is our tweeter. So we're essentially we're just gonna slip these on inside here. Now, just so these don't rattle around, you can use polyfill, you can use sound deadening, you can use cotton, you can use whatever you want to stuff that so they're nice and snug. And uh, we're going to clean up some wiring and uh, put the center console all back together. Because I have, I have an amplifier, and this is going to run all the way up. As you can see there, I drilled a hole through that away from the wiring so you don't damage the wiring. And then I fed the wire down through the grommet, you can see here than into the, the actual door itself. All right, everything's all back together. Seats are all back in, center console's back together. Got our crossovers all hooked up. Now if you want to see how we did the door speakers, I'll post in the description those videos, front and rear doors. Ran all the new wiring through the boots into the doors, both front and back. Good to go, let's go ahead and give you a little test. Super clean. If you have any questions about this install, just go and post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching the channel and uh, we'll see you in the next video.